In this chapter, I'll be giving an overview of the eight major joints of the body. These eight joints determine the range of motion for almost every yoga posture. In addition, I'll be introducing two key concepts, tension and compression. By examining these concepts closely, we will learn to discern the difference between muscular restriction and skeletal restriction. By recognizing these differences, we will be able to determine if and how a yoga posture can be improved. In subsequent chapters, we'll look at the movement of the bones in the shoulder, the spine, and the pelvis. And we'll conclude with a look at proportion and orientation. This DVD is about primarily four ideas, four conceptions, and elaborating them. Those four conceptions are compression, tension, proportion, and orientation. Now, right now, that might not mean anything to you, but it's compression and tension proportion and orientation, hopefully by the end, will mean everything to you about how and why you or someone else does their yoga differently and what they can do about it. And of those four, the first two are really going to be dwelt on. That is compression and tension. When you practice your yoga, when you teach your yoga, when you or your student cannot move into where you want to go, that restriction that you feel is of one of two types. Not one type, two types. It could be compression, where two things, usually bones, are hitting together and can't move anymore. Or it could be tension, where the tissues are not elastic enough to let two bones move apart. These are the two opposites, the yin and the yang of yoga. Is the pain, and not necessarily a bad debilitating pain, is the discomfort, the stress of a pose that you're trying to do, is it compressive stress or is it tensile stress? This makes all the difference in yoga about how you can change that or not how you would try to change that or not. So I'm going to spend most of our time together, at least in the beginning, emphasizing compression, 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 because as yoga practitioners and yoga teachers, you're very familiar in your own subjective experience and in teaching. What does stretching feel like? How can I get more stretch out of this? How can I make that guy stretch more in that pose? And what's not talked about enough is its necessary complementary aspect, compression. Is it because two bones are hitting together and that's why you can't move? If that's the case, how you go about trying to change that is totally different than how you'd go about trying to pull it apart. Compression and tension. When you do or teach a yoga pose, there are two types of stress that you might be feeling, not one. I'm going to try to outline the eight major joints of the body where compression is going to occur. Whether you're a beginner at yoga and it's going to happen for you a year from now or two years from now, or whether you're more experienced in yoga. You've already stretched out your muscles, your tendons, and now your bones are hitting. Everyone experiences compression. We'll try to start with the most obvious examples of compression in our limbs. It's easier to feel, easier to demonstrate. And then we're going to move in towards your pelvis and your spine, where it's harder to feel, a little harder to demonstrate, but the principles are exactly the same. First area to show is how much you can rotate or pronate your hand, which is really your forearm. 
I grab hold of my elbow like this because I don't want to cheat and use my shoulder to do it. I touch my elbow in this way, grab it gently to remind myself, don't do this. Only do it from the elbow down. If I lay my hand open like this, the two bones in my forearm are parallel to one another. One bone, this long bone here, the ulna, it doesn't move. But this bone on the outside going down towards your thumb, it does move. That's what enables you to turn your hand over. Supination, pronation. When I try to turn my palm all the way over, at some point compression here occurs, where soft tissue is compressed in here, and I can't rotate over the top anymore. Parallel, crossed over. So now with flesh on it, parallel bones, trying to cross the bone you can't see, over. When that can't go anymore, it's due to compression. It's not tension. It isn't because something hasn't been adequately stretched that I can't do that. So for me, I start here, rotate, there's 90 degrees, there's another 45 degrees, slightly past that maybe 135 degrees or so of rotation. But if Erin comes up and does this range of motion and she holds her hand like this, these two bones in the arm are parallel to one another. When she rotates her hand over, it's crossing, 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 but look how far she can go. So if we have Erin do what I just did, if we have her hold her arm here, just to remind her, don't do it from your shoulder, only do it from the elbow down. And we ask Erin, turn it out as far as you can. She can actually turn past parallel. Now I say, start your rotation, maybe 90 degrees, and I say, okay, about there. And then for me, I could go about that much further, and then I was done. Erin can go another 45 degrees to there another 45 degrees past that, and almost another 45 degrees past that. And that's because of the shape of her bones, what she was born with. It isn't, yoga didn't develop that. That's just the skeleton that she has. Yoga hasn't developed this in me. It's just what I have. Thank you. Where will this come up? What difference does it make what you can do with your wrists? It comes up any time I place my elbows on the ground or arms straight and try to put my palms flat. So for me, if it were my goal to put my palms down, that's all I can do from the elbow down. The only thing else now I can do to get my palms the rest of the way to the ground is to rotate from my shoulder which means my elbows are going to go out. If I try to keep my elbows in, I can't have my palms on the ground. If I extend my arms, same thing. For me to put my palms flat on the ground in a pose like this, it's got to come from my shoulder. That's why my elbow's going up, elbow's going up. If my elbows stay down and in, my palm will come off the ground. For Erin to do this, she doesn't have to do anything with her shoulder. Just <laughs> palm flat. So let's test it and see. Erin comes forward, kneels down here the way that I did for you, places her forearms on the ground, She's already palms flat showing me up. <laughs> Remember, I was here, and I'm trying to put my palms down, and I was stopped right there. That's all I could do. Erin, palms down, no problem, because of how she can rotate here. She, even if there was a hole dug out here in the floor, Erin could still put her palm on the edge because she can turn over that much. So Erin never has to use her shoulder rotation to place her palms on the ground. So if Aaron goes into a, a moderate downward dog, for Aaron to keep her palms on the ground, she can do any correction up with the shoulder she wants. And look, I can keep her, she can keep her palm on the ground. 
elbows rolled in this way, elbows rolled out that way. She's got so much movement from the forearm down, she has an option of how she wants to manipulate her shoulders to keep her palms flat. I, with my limited range of motion, don't have an option. If I'm in this pose and my elbows are in this way, which is really a shoulder movement, my hand's going to be up off the ground. And the only way to put that down is to roll my elbow, which is my shoulder, down like that. It's easier to see it when the elbow's bent, but it'd be the same shoulder rotation if the elbow was straight. Okay, thank you. So this comes up in any forearm balance that I might do. Headstand, scorpion, downward dog, even if I turned around and went into the wheel, trying to keep my palms pressed, my hands, palms flat to the ground. Not having as much range of motion as Aaron or someone else could make a huge difference in which joint am I moving to keep that palm on the floor. So here's a little principle that goes along with this. It comes up again and again when you're analyzing yourself or someone else. It's called the axis and the extremities. The axis of the body is sort of like it sounds. Anything closer to the center of the body is the axis. Anything further out towards your fingertips or your elbow or further down towards your knees and your feet is the extremity. Don't let the tail wag the dog. If you're one of those that can put your palms down flat in certain of these downward dog or forearm balance positions, that's great. You're probably doing it mostly from your forearm. But don't compromise your shoulder or hurt yourself here close to the axis because your extremity can't do it. If your extremity can't do it, don't punish the axis of your body. Axis and extremity. In yoga, because it's easier to see our hands and it's easier to see our feet and our knees, they're not covered over with thick muscle and under our clothes, we tend to look at ourselves and others by looking at the hands and looking at the feet, assuming that's telling me what's happening here. I look at the hand, assuming that's telling me what's happening here. I look at the foot which we'll see later, assuming that's telling me what's happening up here. And what we're going to discover is that's not always the case. But because it's the easy thing to see, the easy thing to correct, we tend to focus on those things. Focusing on the extremities at the expense of what's happening at the axis is a mistake and will lead to frustration and injury. Two people who look the same on the outside when they're doing a pose are not feeling it the same on the inside. And this is the easiest example to give you. If you looked at Aaron and I and we're both balancing on our forearms or in downward dog and you looked at our hands, and I was wearing long sleeves so you couldn't see my elbow and how it was twisting. <laughs> you looked at our hands and say, okay, they're both doing it the same way. Nothing could be further from the truth. I'm rotating 45 degrees in at my shoulder to make up for what my forearm won't give me. Erin, with her exceptional range of motion, could actually rotate her shoulder the opposite way 45 degrees and still have her palm flat on the ground. And yoga won't change this because this is compression. If it were due to tension, if there was something that could be stretched, something was too tight, I'd never done yoga before and I'd had my arm in a cast, I might not be able to get this full range of motion because of tension. Well, then I'd slowly eventually get to here. But tension is not a resistance here. I feel no stretch anywhere that's inadequate. I feel only compression and there's nowhere to go.